I will skip this first slide because it is about the clinical aspect of PCDH19 that we already described. And uh, since the topic of this uh, talk is the cross-talk between uh, protocadrin 19 and uh, GABAergic signaling, let me spend a few words uh, to remember why GABAergic transmission is so important for the brain, especially for those of you who are not familiar with this topic. So um, neurons uh, communicate by using uh, action potential and spikes, uh, so basically electrical signals, uh, and these signals, uh, in order to cross uh, the gap, the extracellular space between uh, neurons uh, need to be converted into chemical signals, uh, which are neurotransmitters. And uh, in the mammalian brain, uh, the two main uh, neurotransmitters are GABA and uh, glutamate. This binds uh, to their specific postsynaptic receptor uh, on the neuron that receives the message. And in the case of ionotropic receptors, uh, these receptors open uh, when the uh, neurotransmitter bind, uh, thus uh, allowing the current to flow through the plasma membrane. And in the case of glutamate, this current is depolarizing for the neuron since glutamate mediates an excitatory signal, while GABA, uh, the current mediated by GABA, is hyperpolarizing since GABA mediates an inhibitory signal. And when the neuron uh, integrates all the signal it receives, uh, and uh, uh, behaves accordingly. For instance, if the GABAergic signal predominates, uh, the neuron will, uh, let's say, shut up, uh, while if the glutamate predominates, the neuron will uh, generate action potential and uh, spread the message to other neurons. So uh, for this reason, GABA is so important because it counteracts the action of glutamate, uh, so it's important to keep the balance between excitation and inhibition, and also uh, because it sets the level of neuronal excitability. And in addition, it's important to remind that GABA has also another function during brain development, because the GABA is the first neurotransmitter used by the brain, and uh, in developing neurons, uh, it's important because uh, it regulates the proliferation, the migration of neurons, and also their maturation. So for this reason, it's not surprising that uh, uh, alteration in the, uh, uh, in the GABAergic transmission uh, may lead to epilepsy and also to cognitive uh, uh, disabilities. So as you may remember, in the lab, we found that uh, protocadrin 19 binds uh, GABA A receptors, in particular the alpha subunits. GABA A receptors are composed by two alpha subunits, two beta and one gamma or delta. And uh, typically, the gamma subunits uh, are present in synaptic receptors that mediate a phasic inhibition, which is a form of short-lasting inhibition at uh, single synapses, while delta subunits are typical of extrasynaptic receptors that mediate tonic inhibition, which is a sustained inhibition that uh, involves the entire neuron. And according to our data, protocadrin 19 by binding alpha subunits, it's able to associate with both receptor pools. So, and given this uh, interaction, and given the uh, role of GABAergic transmission in the brain, in the lab, uh, we wanted to address uh, this question. So first of all, we ask whether protocadrin 19 loss of function may affect uh, GABAergic transmission. Then we want to understand by which mechanism, and finally, what are the consequences for uh, neurons. So, and to do that, uh, we are using two main experimental uh, models. The first one uh, is um, uh, hippocampal neurons in uh, cultured hippocampal neurons, in which uh, we transfect a specific shRNA to downregulate protocadrin 19 expression. And the second model is more complex, but more physiological, uh, because we use uh, uh, acute hippocampal slices uh, taken from mice in which we inject uh, the same uh, uh, protocadrin 19 shRNA. Uh, and then uh, we uh, use the patch clamp technique uh, to assess uh, inhibitory currents. So concerning the first question, uh, I already showed you last time that uh, um, if we downregulate protocadrin 19 in cultural neurons, uh, we see a decrease of the fuzzy component of inhibitory currents. As you can see here, we have a significant decrease of miniature inhibitory postsynaptic currents uh, that also present a different uh, uh, decay time. But what about the tonic component? 
So uh, to estimate the tonic current in the lab, uh, we use this method. Basically, we uh, block uh, all GABA E receptors by using bicoculin, and then we compare, we, uh, we compare current traces before and after bicoculin application. And as you can see, uh, in addition to block the phasing inhibition, we also observe a, a shift in the holding current uh, and the change uh, in the current noise. And uh, from uh, these two parameters, we are able to extrapolate the extent of con tonic current uh, of neurons. So we compare control neurons uh, with uh, neurons expressing an shRNA and also with the rescue condition, in which we co-express the shRNA together with protocadrin 19, and this is a control for the specificity of our shRNA. So as you can see in this uh, uh, graph, uh, we observe a significant reduction in the current shift uh, and also in the current noise uh, when we downregulate protocadrin 19, thus indicating that also the tonic component is affected by protocadrin 19 downregulation. And now, uh, right in these days, uh, we are uh, trying to reconfirm this data in hippocampus lysis. Uh, these are still preliminary data. Here, the experimental approach is slightly different because, for instance, uh, here we uh, compare the currents uh, under control condition and currents that we evoke uh, by using uh, an agonist of delta-containing a bioreceptor, but uh, uh, basically you, you can obtain extrapolate similar data, and in particular that there is a reduction of the current shift, uh, indicating a reduction in the tonic current. So uh, what about the mechanism? Well, there are at least uh, uh, three parameters uh, uh, that determine uh, the extent of inhibitory transmission in neurons. First of all, uh, it's the number of receptors on the cell surface. Uh, the more receptors, the more current, of course. Uh, but then we need also to consider the biophysical properties of single channels. Uh, uh, for instance, the conductance, uh, which is how much current flows through the receptor when it's open, and also the kinetic, because uh, uh, a single receptor exists in different states, uh, can be open or closed, for instance. So uh, concerning uh, uh, the surface expression of GABA receptors, uh, we already observed that, that uh, if we don't regulate in vitro protocadrin 19, uh, we observe a decrease uh, in the amount of uh, uh, GABA receptor on the surface. And now we are trying to reconfirm the data in vivo by using uh, experimental uh, mouse experimental models. Uh, for instance, here we have the first data that we obtain by looking at uh, a um, mouse with a PCDH19 mosaic expression obtained by the crossbreeding of uh, our PCDH19 flux mouse with the Cree expressed in mice. And as you can see, while there is no, cha no uh, change in the level of the, uh, in the total level of um, uh, alpha-1 containing GABA receptors, uh, there is a significant uh, decrease in the amount of this receptor on the surface. Okay, what about the conductance of these receptors? Well, uh, we first extrapolated this parameter by looking at uh, um, the noise uh, variance. And uh, by using this simple method, we saw that there was no significant difference between control neurons and sHRNA expressed in neurons or, or rescue neurons. And, uh, but to be more precise, we also decided to shift from a whole cell patch clamp configuration to a cell attached configuration. Basically, by using this approach uh, that we used to obtain the data that I've shown you till now, we are able to record the currents that flow through the entire population of GABA receptor of a neuron, while by using this cell attach approach, we are able to record the currents that flow through a single channel. And we obtain something like that. So basically, this is a current trace. The current is zero when the channel is open, and you see this deflection when the channel opens. So, and by using this uh, more precise approach, we were able to appreciate that uh, um, each patch, in each patch we could find three different levels of conductances, which is uh, quite known in the literature. And these uh, three conductance levels were represented in both control and sHRNA expressing neurons. We also look at their relative proportion, and the proportion was uh, the same. 
in, uh, does indicate in that protocadrin 19 uh, does not affect the conductance of GABA receptors. And what about the third parameter, so the kinetics? Here we look at the uh, opening and closing properties of the channel, and uh, in particular, uh, I would like to show you uh, this, uh, to explain you this graph, because uh, we saw a difference in the open time distribution of neurons expressed in PCDH19 down regulation. This graph here means that uh, there is a higher proportion of brief openings uh, in the channel of these neurons at the expense of openings with long duration. In other words, it means that when uh, these channels open, they do not stay open for long, they close soon afterwards. It means that uh, the channel is flickering, and this behavior is associated with the re a reduction of the current that can flow through the receptor. So in conclusion, we found that uh, there are at least, at least two mechanisms by which protocadrin 19 might uh, affect GABAergic currents. The first is by regulating the number of receptors on the surface, and the second is by regulating their kinetic. And since we know that GABAergic conductance is important for uh, uh, neuronal excitability, in particular the tonic current, we decide to look at uh, neuronal excitability. And in particular, we measure the action potentials of neurons. Again, we have a scramble, SHRNA, and rescue expressing neurons. And uh, basically, we noticed an increase in the input resistance, which is a parameter that correlates well with the decrease of the tonic current. There is a significant decrease in the rail base, uh, which means that we need uh, to inject uh, a reduced amount of current uh, in a neuron in order to evoke an action potential, meaning that the cell is hyper-excitable. And uh, in agreement with this, uh, uh, for a certain amount of current that we inject uh, in a neuron, we see a higher frequency of spiking uh, in neurons in which uh, protocadrin 19 has been downregulated. Other parameters, such as the resting membrane potential, or the shape of action potential, or the threshold was unaffected. Again, we are trying to reconfirm the da this data in hippocampus slices, and these are still preliminary data, but uh, in agreement with what observed in vitro. Uh, so we uh, still have a, uh, an increase in the input resistance into different SHRNA, both specific for protocadrin 19, a significant decrease in the rail base, and uh, an increase in the spike in frequency. So to summarize, we found that protocadrin 19 binds GABA E receptors, and I hope I convinced you that this binding uh, is important for at least two reasons. First of all, because uh, protocadrin 19 can regulate both the phasic and tonic component of inhibitory currents. And second, because protocadrin 19 uh, can modulate uh, inhibitory currents by at least two mechanisms. So it is able to regulate the amount of receptor on the surface, but also their kinetics. And finally, we saw that this uh, reduction in inhibitory, in inhibitory transmission is associated with an increase in neuronal excitability that is corre may be correlated with the seizure, higher seizure susceptibility. And uh, in addition, we cannot exclude that these GABAergy defects uh, may contribute to some defects uh, during uh, brain development. And in this uh, last slide, I want to show you uh, uh, which is one of our next uh, goal, uh, which is uh, to try to put uh, this GABAergy hypothesis in the context of cell interference, because uh, as you know well, uh, in the, for this pathology, it's very crucial the coexistence of protocadrin 19 positive and negative cells. And so these two cell populations, of course, differ for their uh, adhesive code, because protocadrin 19 is, of course, an adhesion molecule. But uh, uh, we think that uh, these two populations may also differ for their GABAergic signaling and uh, uh, excitability level. And since the role of GABAergic inhibition, we think that this may cause a bias, for instance, during the formation of circuits, but also later, during the process of learning and memory. 
for instance, uh, it's important to keep in mind that the level of excitability of a certain cell, it's important to determine whether this cell will be recruited, for instance, in a memory trace. In other words, as I wrote here, the memory formation relies on the wiring of neurons that share a similar excitatory level. So finally, let me thank uh, the people of the lab, uh, especially the electrophysiologists directly involved in this project, uh, who are Maya Serrato, Luca Murru, and Erika Pizzi. And uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs>